Hello, this is Rich and uh, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on uh, modeling, texturing and exporting a custom weapon um, for CryEngine 3. Um, I'm going to go through the parts of uh, teaching you how to model a, uh, an axe or a tomahawk, depending on what you want to call it, um, texturing it and exporting it to CryEngine as a pickable object. Um, the next tutorial after this is going to be uh, taking that object and uh, turning it into a, um, a weapon that's usable. Um, so I guess you can call it a pickable object slash uh, melee weapon uh, tutorial. Um, I know melee weapons are uh, things that people want to do um, and they've only been able to find tutorials really on making uh, like uh, firing weapons like guns and stuff, rocket launchers and stuff like that. Um, but this tutorial is going to include um, the melee weapons, which is uh, hard to find for documentations. Um, my future tutorials are going to be um, just on things that I know how to do so I can share and also on the stuff that um, is really hard to find documentation for um, because otherwise you wouldn't need a tutorial. There'd be a good documentation on this. Um, so let's get started. Um, right now we're going to start modeling an axe. Um, this is going to be in 3D Studio Max. I'm using the 2012 version um, and it's free from uh, uh, students.autodesk.com Okay, so I'm going to open this up right now and we'll get started Okay, 3D Studio Max is open here. I'm just going to be creating a new um, new file setup Let's see here. Oh my bad, I just opened up Mudbox, my bad. So yeah, we're gonna load up 3D Studio Max. Just wondering why it was like that. In case you're wondering, Mudbox is also the 2012 version, um, and that's free as well from the students.autodesk.com. Okay, now we're going to start a new scene by clicking uh, New Empty Scene. Um, for any chance if this window does not pop up or if you've chosen it uh, not to show the welcome screen, you just go ahead and close out of that. Close out of any open uh, startup scripts that you have open because you won't be needing those um, for this tutorial. Unless you've magically found a uh, make a weapon script that just makes everything for you, you can keep that open and send it my way. Alright, so we've got a new scene here. I'm going to be going to the perspective view. Um, you can open it up uh, to full viewport by going to the bottom right hand corner. There's a little arrow button that says uh, maximize viewport toggle. Um, okay, I'm going to be uh, modeling a, um, well, teaching you guys how to model an axe. It's very simple, it's not going to be really high poly at all. Um, and um, it's just going to be simple, simple. It's not going to be highly, highly detailed. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go actually to the uh, top view. You can hit that by pressing T on your keyboard for a shortcut. Um, if it's not, T is not a uh, top view shortcut for you. Upper left hand corner there's a uh, viewport display options. You're going to see uh, perspective if you're in perspective or top if you're in top. You can just go ahead and left click on that once. And you're going to see uh, the top option here. Um, you're going to go ahead and click that. All right. So to um, start this off, um, we're going to want to make sure that Customize um, Unit Setup is uh, selected. Um, you're going to want to be working in the uh, centimeters uh, unit setup for the display scale and the system unit. Um, although CryTech, um, CryEngine 3 uses the uh, meter system, you're going to want to choose uh, metric centimeters as it, not meters, centimeters works the best here. Um, otherwise, you'll get some uh, downscaling and it's, I think it's a bug or something. After you've done that, go to system unit setup and uh, one unit equals type in 1.0 if that's not there. Go ahead and set this to centimeters as well and go ahead and put oh, centimeters and go ahead and push OK. Now we're ready to start modeling with the correct scale for CryEngine. All right, there is no, um, we're going to be basically using uh, shapes uh, to model the outline of our object and then extrude from there. Uh, this is the simplest way I find of modeling stuff like these. 
So we're going to go up in the right hand corner, uh, roll up bar. Um, we're going to want to make sure we're in the crate tab. Instead of um, the sh uh, geometry, we're going to open up the shapes tab. In the shapes tab, make sure splines is selected and go ahead and click on line. Um, if you haven't done so already, um, turn on snapping um, by clicking on it. It will turn blue if it's enabled. Go ahead and right click that as well and uh, set the snapping onto grid points. Make sure nothing else is selected. Otherwise, you can get some funky things going on. All right, once you've done that, go ahead and close it. Um, so we're going to be outlining the uh, shape of this here. Um, like I said, it's not going to be anything great. Um, so I've just clicked once here, and it's waiting for me to uh, click again to end the end of the spline. Um, so I'm going to be creating the handle. Okay, clicked again. Now I can continue creating. Each click creates a vertex where you can continue a line from that vertex. So this is the handle. So we're going to go ahead and click here. We're going to click here. Uh, let's see. And then left click on the uh, first vertex that you've created to close this blind. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna close? You're gonna click yes. Okay, I'm gonna now go to uh, the perspective viewport by clicking the P key. If not, you can again go to the um, viewport properties up here, click on it and then hit the perspective button. It's gonna bring you to this perspective uh, viewport. Um, as you can see, we just have the basic outline. It's a simple, very simple uh, shape of an ax. I'm going to want to right click to get out of the editing of the spline. Um, right click on the object and go to convert to edible poly. And that's going to create a polygon, um, a single polygon where you've uh, had the outline. All right, we're also going to go to the roll up bar. Make sure we're in the modifier tab and go ahead and collect the pol uh, click the polygon. Um, from there on, we're going to select this polygon. It's going to turn red or whatever color you told it to. Uh, turn selected uh, polygons. Go ahead and click the extrude tool because we're going to be extruding it to add three dimensions to it. So uh, click on the settings tab of the uh, extrude, it's just a little box here. We're going to be selecting our, um, our uh, height of this here and go ahead and just um, set it however you want. Let's see here. A good value I'm, I'm going to be finding here is um, I think six is going to be a good value. Uh, I'm going to just highlight this and push six and push enter. There we go. And just push the checkbox to let it know you're all done. Uh, I'm going to deselect the uh, polygon selection mode to just edit the entire object. Um, if you look at the bottom, there's going to be no polygon on the bottom. That's because uh, when we created the spline and then turned it into edible poly, um, it was a one-sided object um, when we extruded. Now we're going to add another side to this. The easiest way to do this is to um, look at the bottom here, and you can see that it's a uh, there's no polygon covering the other side. In the modifiers tab of the object, go ahead, select the drop down, and uh, from here, uh, select the cap holes. Um, as soon as you do that, you're going to see that it now added a polygon to the bottom. Um, this is what we want here. Um, go ahead, turn off smooth new faces. Make sure no checkbox is selected here. We're going to want to right click the cap holes modifier and collapse all and click yes there we go we basically now got our um, our nice shape here okay um, now we got to make it uh, look more like an axe and obviously axes or tomahawks do not have a um, a flat tip so we're going to go ahead and go into the uh, sub object mode of, uh, of edges so select the edges on this object here go ahead and select this edge right here um, and the bottom edge here um, you can do this by clicking on the edge and select the other edge you're going to want to hold control while you click it um, now you've selected both edges at the same time 
Um, you can go into the, um, then we're gonna go into the uh, selecting uniform scale. Um, actually, um, Okay, we're not going to be able to scale this, so just go into the Move tool and uh, just select one of the faces here. And you're going to want to bring it down by uh, a certain amount. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. So just go ahead and select it. You're going to want to bring it down by a certain amount um, to create that point, that point to it. Um, So let's bring it down by say two point five. So <clears throat> bottom right hand corner, while you have that edge selected, um, you're going to see on the z axis is six centimeters or whatever you have it there. Um, just uh, subtract um, three uh, three point five. Let's see. well just three point. Five. That brings it down 3.5. You're going to have to find your own number to bring it down by. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm just going to end up just... Uh, see, I don't have an issue here because if you see... Um, it looks uh, like it's not going to be a flat ed edge for the uh, axe because of the fact that there's a, a vertex here but nothing on the other side. Um, so we're just going to add that in here. Um, just to let you know I have not uh, did this exact axe um, beforehand so it's a little bit of a trial and error during this tutorial. I'm sorry about that. Um, but we'll get you up and running. We're going to want to go to the top view by hitting T on our keyboard and um, the best way to do this is to go ahead, select the object, go into vertex mode, and uh, just make sure you turn the view so you don't, so that you can see both of these um, these vertexes here, and just select one of them. If you had it on the top view, um, just like this, and selected that vertex, there would be a possibility of you selecting the bottom one. So we just change the view, um, just selecting that one to make sure we only selected that one. All right, so we're gonna go back in the top view, and make sure that that's selected. And uh, we're going to want to go into this uh, quick slice in the right hand side, um, edit geometry uh, properties. Go ahead and cl cl select uh, quick slice and um, go ahead and uh, just basically draw. Let's see here. Uh, make sure snapping is on. Uh, that way it snaps right to these um, grid points here. Um, and go ahead and click on the grid point, make sure it's snapped, and go ahead and uh, it's snapped to the grid point that's right under these vertexes and just uh, click on it. Um, let's go ahead and um, beside the perspective options here, uh, the viewport options under realistic, I have mine set to realistic for the viewport uh, display graphics or whatever it's called here. I'm going to make sure edge face, faces is selected. Um, you're now going to be able to see that it, go, it went ahead and it created a nice little polygon, uh, oh sorry, a, a edge along um, straight across the entire object. This is hopefully going to allow you to uh, bring these two edges in here without a, and still keeping this polygon flat. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, I'm going to go ahead and unselect quick slice, otherwise you'll slice your uh, object in. So go ahead back to the lines, the uh, edge selection turn off your grid snapping and uh, let's bring this down a little bit. You're going to notice how beautiful that, that goes in and out without creating any extra uh, slanted geometry because you know axes have a flat plane um, during that. Um, keep in mind you're going to want to have to um, move both of these edge lines here otherwise if you just move the top one you're going to end up with a, uh, a slant just on one side of the uh, axe and usually they come to meet together not one side meeting the other they meet together in the middle. So we're going to go ahead and bring this down, um, bring this down a little bit, and uh, we're also going to bring this up a bit. I'm not too concerned about being exactly even, just as long as it looks okay. 
um, people are not going to really sit there playing your game and say, wow, that's a little bit off because you're going to be swinging the hell out of this thing and they're not going to notice it. Um, so let's go ahead and bring that down. Okay. Uh, here we go. Like that is fine. Um, so we now have the uh, one end, which is the uh, hitting part of the uh, axe. Nice and nice slant. We're also going to take this um, this edge down um, as well. And basically, what we're going to do here is um, we might have to add some more lines to make it, uh, you know, more edges. So just like we did on this side. But let's try this out. Go into vertex mode. We're going to be clicking this vertex right on the end here. And uh, we're going to be bringing this down to see what this looks like, if that looks like it's doable or not. Um, and no, it doesn't look like that's doable. Um, on this side, we're just basically going to want a, um, a, um, like a point. One, axe is good, one side is going to be the axe part, the other side is going to be like a little jabbing point. So what we're going to have to do here is, again, create this um, extra edge along this uh, vertex right here. So go ahead and top view. Um, zoom in if you need to. Um, go right ahead to the quick slice. Make sure your snapping is on so let me get that nice straight edge going along here. Go ahead and click and then click on this vertex because it, it will snap. And see I'm moving around but it still snapped to that. Go ahead, you've selected it. Right click to get out of your quick slicing mode. Um, hmm. Okay. For some reason, it did not create that line. It just created uh, uh, vertexes there. So go back to your top view. Um, go ahead to your edge mode and uh, make sure quick slice is selected. And uh, let's try this again. See if this works. Um, hmm. Very weird, it hasn't done this. Hold on, guys. Okay, it uh, created a, um, a polygons, the polygons on uh, on one side, um, but not the other. Um, let's try to get this taken care of here. Okay, so what's the issue here? That side's taken care of. This side's not taken care of. Okay, let's see what the issue is. I'm going to be um, deleting all of this. And um, I'm going to stop the recording to get this taken care of. And then uh, come back when I've got this taken care of. All right, thank you for your...